If we open up a regular clip in the Fusion tab, we'll see that we have a media out node and a media in node. Now, our media in node is our footage, which then displays out to the viewer. However, if we're making our own backgrounds, what we're looking for is to be able to replace that media in node with something that we've created ourselves. So that's where a Fusion composition comes in, because this in the timeline allows you to just have that media out node in the Fusion tab, which means that by default to the viewer, it just displays a black screen. However, if we are then to put in something such as a background node, then we'll start to get what we're looking for. But it can get more interesting than that, because if we use something like a fast noise node, then we can start to get procedurally generated moving backgrounds for our videos. So that means that then you could place over that with graphics and titles and whatever else to make something more interesting for a viewer. Now, if we step into DaVinci Resolve and grab a fusion composition from the effects section of our toolbox, then we can put that into the timeline and open the fusion tab. Now that we're in the fusion tab, we can see that we just have that media out node as we wanted. And now we can grab our background node from the hotbar and put it in, connecting it to the media out node. Before we do anything else, we'll just set the background of that to be something other than black, just so we're very well aware that it's there. So I'm just going to choose a nice red colour. Now as we can see, that red is being passed from the background node into the media out node and then onto the viewer. On the background node, we also have different types of gradients, which can make the background look much more interesting. So the first one we have is a horizontal gradient, with two colours pointing in from the left and the right sides of the screen. Then the next one we have is called a vertical gradient, which has the colours coming in from the top and the bottom of the screen instead. The third one we have is called a four corner gradient, which once again does what it says. It has colours coming in from the four corners of the screen and meeting in a gradient in the middle. The final and most customizable option is the gradient type. Now what this lets you do is it lets you use a line tool to completely customize the position and scale of your gradient on the screen. This is then even more powerful if you use the gradient controls to change the colors of the different sections of the gradient, even being able to add your own color in the middle, making a much more complex gradient with many more parts. There are also a few other gradient types that I won't go into specifics here, but are useful to check out if you're looking for something interesting and different. Now whilst these backgrounds can look interesting, you can make a much more dynamic background by using something such as the fast noise node that I covered at the beginning. Now to do this, we'll drag the fast noise node from the hotbar down into the timeline, connecting it the same as we did the background node. Now with this one, if we head into the colour section of its inspector panel, we'll see that we have two different colours, which are going to be the two different sections. So as we can see in my example here with the red and white, the red section, which is the top item, is one area which will be randomly positioned, and then the white section is a separate area. These are again randomly positioned blobs. These randomly positioned blobs are the whole concept of noise and can be further customised by using things such as the detail, contrast, brightness and scale option in the inspector panel. However, the most important option of all is of course the seethe rate. Now this is the control that lets us choose how fast our noise is moving to create that dynamic background. Now by default this is set to zero, so no movement at all, however we can tweak this to find just the right amount of movement to create a not distracting but still interesting background. And then practically this can be used to put graphics and titles over the top to make your content seem much more interesting. It is worth noting though, that whilst I've used red for all of my examples, you can use any colour combination for yours, making it completely customisable.